All right, guys. Well, let's uh, let's get rocking. I want to want to make this hour count, and so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, document that you all should have. Um, you know, playing guitar is not that hard. It's not hard to sound good when you're playing songs. Okay. I mean, I think there's more advanced levels, but I think just getting good. Solid songs played, I think, is not that difficult. Basically, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use two hands. This is what you've got to do. Okay, play a song. Your left hand has to memorize five chords. That's You have to have five chords down to play you know, a good amount of songs. Okay? So I took them down right here on page one. Okay, That's all the basic chords. <coughs> These are the best ways to play the chords, too. You'll find different versions of how to play chords. This is the best. Okay. I put in black, I highlighted in black, the five chords that I want you to memorize. And if you can memorize those five chords, you could play hundreds, thousands of songs. Guaranteed, I and mean, literally thousands of songs. So this is what we're gonna focus on first. So if you can get your left hand to play those chords and shift between them in about half a second per chord, this hand's done and ready to play songs, okay? What we're going to have to do is with the right hand, we're going to have to learn a good basic strumming pattern. And so page two is going to teach you the strumming pattern. Okay? And if you can get this strumming pattern down, let's say if you could do this eight times in 12 seconds, that hand's ready for songs. Okay? How do you read this? Well, there are eight arrows. Eight arrows, right? So that shows you the strumming direction of your hand. And you're only going to hit where the black dots are. And if you do that, let's, let's just take a look and see what that sounds like. Right hand, um, assuming you're right-handed. Uh, if I'm playing a G chord, watch what happens with this hand when I play that, that strumming pattern. So first arrow is down, you're supposed to hit, right? All right, so let's do that together, right? Uh, what we can do is uh, let's just mute our strings, mute our strings, just barely touch the strings so that when you hit it, kind of gives a click sound. Very lightly touch the strings. Okay? First strum is going to be down, so take your pick and hit the strings because there's a black dot on it. Okay? Second arrow is what direction? Up, up. up and a miss, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? The next two are hits, right? The next arrow is a down stroke and a miss. And then the last three are hits. Okay? Get your pens out, I'm going to give a name to each one of these arrows. Musicians sometimes will talk about certain strums, and we have to have a name for it. So make all the down strokes, we're going to put numbers on them. So the first down stroke is one, so write one above it. Okay. The first up stroke, so the second strum, we're going to put and, or plus. If you just, if you just listen, you'll be fine. I, I, yeah, you took the rhythm class, right? Yeah. So you're, you got it. Okay, the next, so you're going to put a plus above that one. That's going to represent and. So we're going to call the first arrow one. We're going to call the second arrow one and. Okay? The second downstroke is going to be two. And then the, the upstroke next to that, we're going to put a plus sign. That's going to be the two and. Okay, then we're going to put three, and then a plus, and then four, and then a plus. Got that? So I can verbally talk to you about certain strums now, right? That last arrow, what are we going to call that? And. Yep, we'll call it and. Or it, to be specific, we call it the four and. Then we know which and it is, right? Uh, what about this one right here? What is that called? Three. That's three. What would the one right after be? Three and. Three and. Okay, got it? Okay, so we're going to strum on the one. We're going to strum on the two. We're going to strum on the two and, right? We're going to strum on the three and, the four, and the four and. Okay? Good stuff. So when we get that down, let me show you what it will sound like. I'm going to play G chord and listen to what this sounds like. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down. I'm going to repeat it now. Down, down, up, up, down.
that? So, nice sounding rhythm, right? It's not a beginner rhythm. This is a this is a professional rhythm. It's not like a baby like junky rhythm that you're gonna throw up when you get better. No, this is a real rhythm. And it's the best rhythm, I think. I think it's one of the two best rhythms. I still use this rhythm all the time, even as a professional musician. Okay, so do you think you could do that? Let's say, uh, you think you could get that pattern done at some point? Yeah, piece of cake. All right, so if you can do that, get it down to the point where you're doing about eight of them in about 12 seconds, so that'd probably be about this speed. Do you think you could ever do this? Oh, yeah. Then it's done. That, that when you can do that, your right hand is ready for songs. All right, so what you do this week, you just sit there and you just practice it over and over and over again, eventually memorize it, and then just try to loop it over and over and over again, so that when you get to the end of this arrow, the very last arrow, you just start it over again, and over and over and over again, okay? So put right, right somewhere up here, write the word goal, and then put colon, put eight X in less than 12 seconds. So you just want to do eight times through in less than 12 seconds. Now, if you don't get it done this week, that's okay. But like, once you get to eight times in less than 12 seconds, that right hand's ready for a song. It's ready for a strum. And as you advance into higher levels of playing too, um, this idea of keeping your hand pumping is very important. Let me show you what is the wrong way to do this. Right? It's jerky and it's not keeping that hand flowing, right? The correct way of playing is to keep that hand pumping at all times. So even when you get to be an advanced player, you're going to continue to do that. Watch my, watch my playing. I'm going to play some rhythms and watch how the hand keeps moving. See that? Constantly moving down and up. And we're not going to get into that stuff yet. It's not the beginner class. But you see, the concept is yeah. good. It keeps flowing, right? You're a little richer now. Yeah. And so that's why we use these charts. The charts keep that hand flowing. How you doing? I ignored it. You got your uh, sheet? Yes. Your document? Cool. Yeah. Excellent. OK, so with that said, now we're going to go back to the chords. Let's flip back one sheet, one, one page to page one. And I want to try to start. Um, Let's, let's start working on those chords. Has anyone tried any of the chords yet? Yeah. Yeah? No? Okay. Great. So you're in the right class, the beginner class. And I, I promised it's, the, it's a true beginner class, so we're going to start from the beginning basics, OK? But we won't stay there. So after a couple weeks, we're going to be long gone. We'll be long gone doing some really new and cool stuff. So, OK, let's try this out. Let's go ahead and go to the E minor chord. This left column is a column of major chords. Okay? The right column, do you see how it has a little M after each, after each chord name? That's called a minor chord. Okay? What's the difference between a major chord and a minor chord? Flat a third. Flat a third, but, but what's the difference in sound? They sound sad versus not. Absolutely. Let's, let's listen to the, the minor chords. Okay? Listen to this. These are, these are only minor chords. Do that, set. Now here's major chords. So major chords are what column, left or right? Left. 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 Okay, let's listen to these. Here's a G. Totally different sounds, right? Most songs mix the two. Okay, so you'll find that. So if you ever see a little M after the chord name, what chord is it? What kind of chord is it? Minor. It's gonna be a minor chord, and it's gonna be relatively sad. How you doing, Bess? Hi. Take right. yourself at home and uh, plenty of seats around. 
There is a couple over here too if you want to check that out. You can sit there. Okay, so let's go ahead and try one of these chords, okay? Let's start with the E minor. Okay, it's my favorite chord. Of any of the chords on here, it's my favorite chord. Uh, let's figure out how to, how to read these sheets, okay? So we're on page one. And basically, look at my guitar neck. You see that? It's like a snapshot of the guitar neck. So these things, um, so we're going to call this, in, in my class, I'm going to call this string number one. That's how I'm going to call it, okay? String two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? No, there's not seven strings. There's only six. There's only six strings, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, and these are going to be called frets. Do you see this space between this thing and this metal? That space there, we're going to call fret number one. Say it, fret one. Fret one. Fret. Number two, this is fret number two, fret number three, fret number four, and so forth, okay? This is going to be finger number one. Middle finger is going to be finger number two, ring finger is going to be finger number three, and then four, okay? So let's, let's take a look at E minor. You see that there are some numbers going down along the left side of the chart. See that? That's going to tell you fret numbers. Okay. Now, um, it will. You see that it says one and two on the E minor chord. That tells you what fingers you're going to use. Okay. So let's try one one at a time. Your one finger goes on what string? Second string down. Because actually, the left line is a string. Itself, okay? So it's going to go on the second string. Which fret is it on? Second. Second fret. Okay? So go ahead and push it down. Your two finger is going to go on what string? D string. Yep, D string or your third string down from the top. And what fret? Second. So let's go ahead and let's press those down and strum all six strings. Uh, we got a couple guitars that are out of tune a little bit, but that's fine. I can tune them. At, I can tune them in a little bit, okay? At the end. Uh, so just make sure that we've got that. Okay. Now, take your hand, put it behind your back, but first memorize how that looks. We got to use one finger and two fingers. These two fingers. Very important. Do not use these two fingers or these two fingers. Use these two. When you get into further levels, there's going to be a reason for it, that I want you to use these two. Someday, I'm going to teach, you know, if you guys go into the intermediate class eventually, I'm going to teach you to use. You know, kind of throwing in some of that stuff. So I need these two available, so use these two. If you already memorized it with the other fingers, you've got to retrain yourself. So take your hand now, put it behind your back. Now do the E minor again, go. That'll be in the left column. The left column are happy major chords. The right column with the lip with the little M next to each chord name. So that's minor and it's gonna be sad. So we're gonna try the G major chord and it's gonna require you to use all four fingers. So point your finger. Number one finger, what what string does it go on? Second string, what fret? Second fret. Middle finger, the two finger, what string does it go on? One, third fret, and then your ring and your pinky finger, your three and four fingers, have to go down to the bottom. What fret? Third fret. And it's going to feel so weird if you've never played this before. It's going to feel so strange. Okay, now press the strings down very hard, nice and hard. And you can strum all six strings. There you go. Good stuff. Okay? 
Um, now, there's a couple of things that you need to think about, okay? And I'm going to take a couple minutes in just a second here, and I'm going to tune up about three guitars here, okay? But what we're going to do in the meantime is I want to talk about how to get these chords to sound very good, okay? Now, listen carefully. If I can teach you you know, how it works, you can understand it a little bit better. When I, when I press down this string right here, and I pluck the string, where does it vibrate from? It, it vibrates from down here. To your finger. Not to my finger. No. Oh, to the wire. To the metal bar, okay? Now listen, if I'm far away from the bar, what can happen is that string can actually flap on the metal and it can make a buzzing sound. So you're always gonna sound a little bit better if you can get your finger near the, the bar, near that fret, but not on it, close to it, okay? So when I play a G major chord, watch my fingers. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Am I that direction in the fret, or am I that direction in the fret? Right? And when I'm closer to that bar, and it's gonna make less buzzing. A lot of buzzing, right? Less buzzing when I'm more down there, okay? So when I'm doing an E minor, that's not good. See that? But if I can scoot it down close, a little bit closer, that's better. Okay? That's one little trick. Now, here's something else. When you're playing your G chord, look, this was the G chord, right? <clears throat> there are a couple things that will make a chord sound bad. Now, I have my finger in the right place. Let's go ahead and. What if I do with my fingers? No, let's listen to to my chord. Something sounds weird. Now I'm gonna go one string at a time. Listen. Doesn't sound good, right? Okay. My issue here is that I'm not pressing the strings down hard enough. Okay? Now look what happens if I take my fingers and I barely touch a string, the strings. Nothing sounds. Because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually causing the string to not vibrate when I pluck it. Because I'm deadening it, right? So that's one way that you can get your chords to sound bad. And, and usually not all the strings will sound bad, but maybe one or two will sound bad. And it might be because you're not pressing down hard enough. Now there's another thing that will make the strings or make it sound bad. Okay? Now I'm pressing down hard enough, but let's listen to this. Why is that second string down not sounding? That fatty part of my finger is kind of hanging down over and muting the string below it. So for this reason, we need to cut our fingernails, which you should not look at my fingernails right now. I just got back from Nigeria for a couple of weeks and I didn't have time to cut them while I was gone. I didn't have the, the clippers. But you want to have short fingernails, if you can, and you want to get up on the fingertips. Why do you want to get way up on the fingertips? So you're only pressing the place you want to press. Yeah, the fatty part of our fingers is not leaning, like hanging over and muting the strings below. Okay, so essentially there are three things that I just mentioned that can make a, make, make a chord sound bad. What were they? Not pressing hard enough. That's, not that's pressing close enough to the fret. Not pressing close enough to the fret. And the third? Fingers are Right. That fatty part of the finger hanging down. Okay? So these are things that you can work on. So as you go home and you practice these chords, I, I want you to focus on the ones that are highlighted in black first. Those are the five primary chords that if you can get those down, we can start playing countless songs, okay? But as you're doing it, I want you to work on getting that technique to sound, you know, so the chords sound, sound nice. So what you can do to test it out, and, and I expect that they won't sound nice when you first start. You just start it, right? It's gonna take a little bit of time. You're gonna feel so awkward when you're playing the chords. But as time goes on, what you can do to test them is pluck one string at a time. So get your hand where it needs to be, and then you pluck, and you go one at a time. So 
See that? But if you go like this, listen, listen. And you say, okay, that doesn't sound right. Then you turn your head and you look and say, okay, what's the issue, right? And you try to correct that. Got it? Any questions before we move on? Um, quick question. Yeah. With respect to any chord when you're playing, do you strum all the strings, all six of them, or is it a pattern that for certain chords you strum only the lower three and certain upper three? Great question. So let's look at this. Let's look at this this chart, okay? Um, so you see sometimes above the chart you'll see a little X. If you see an X above a string, it means don't touch that string. You're not allowed to strum that string. Okay. If you see a zero or an O, that means that string is open. There's no fingers on that string, but you are supposed to play it. Okay. So look at the A the, on the top left, the A major chord. Uh, how many strings are you supposed to strum? Five. 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 Yep. You skip the first one. Okay. <coughs> look at the D major fourth chord down on the left. You're supposed to strum four. You're just going to skip the first two. Okay. So as you're as you're learning these chords, you want to memorize. Uh, you know, you want to memorize how many strings you're supposed to skip. Got it? Okay. So on this chart, I want you to write over here the word goal, and then colon, and then write chord changes under a half second. Or say you can write chord changes in a half second. If you can get your hands to change from one chord to the next <coughs> in about a half second, your left hand is in good shape for, for songs. Not the, the bolder ones? <clears throat> for now, yeah. Eventually you'll want to get down some of those other ones. <clears throat> so if you feel like you already have those black bolded um, chords down, what you want to do then is you're gonna to wanna to focus, take your pen, and I want you to circle a few other ones, okay? This will be the second round that you'll work on. So once you get the ones that are, that are bolded in black, then you go to this next round. So I want the A major, circle that. Circle that, you can just circle the, the A. <clears throat> I want the D minor. I want the E major on the left. And that's it. That would be the second round, the ones that you just circled, okay? We start with the ones that are bolded in black. Once you get those down, then we go to the ones that we put a circle around. <clears throat> and um, then, which, what is the characteristic of the ones that I didn't have you circle and the ones that I didn't have you work on? Barcodes. Bar <laughs> bar chords. And those are those first. Yeah, yeah. They are, they are, a little bit of a pain in the butt for beginners, and it just it takes some time. I'll show you what they look like real quick. And we will get into those probably maybe next week. Okay. <clears throat> so you see that? Alright, did you ever hear this song? So these are called bar chords, and when you're looking at it, if you're a beginner, you probably say that looks that looks painful or difficult or something, right? <clears throat> and it is. So just I want to warn you right now, if you haven't tried bar chords yet, just get ready because they're gonna just be a pain in the butt. They do, because when I started playing them, it sounded like this. Yeah. <laughs> and then whenever I try to move them. They're, they're a movable chord. Every time I, my fingers would just be like all over the place and you'd have to reform it. But over time you get used to kind of keeping them in the same position and kind of moving them like a train on a train track. All right? But, gotta start somewhere. So just, you, I have to be realistic with you. Most people, when they start the bar chords, it just sounds bad for a month. And then it'll sound good. So you just gotta be ready for it, okay? So what are the two things that we're going to be working on this week? Go eight times of the A strip rhythm in less than 12 seconds. Yep. And the dark chord changes in less than 55 seconds. Yep. Okay. So what you'll do, um, I think I would say uh, this is a, a little game that I, I played when I was learning this. Ready? 
If we're gonna learn the five black chords, here's what I would do. Play the A minor, put it behind your back, bring it up, strum it. Put it behind your back, bring it up, strum it. Just do it over and over again. And you do that with all five chords. Once you get comfortable with that, here's what I would do. I would play your A minor, then I would go to C. A minor, go to D. A minor, E minor, A minor, G. Do you see what I did? Yeah. I did A minor between all of the chords that I'm doing. So I get used to the transferring between those chords. Then what I would do is I would do the same thing with a C. C, A minor, C, D, C, E minor, C, G. What would I do next? Same thing with the D. D, A minor, D, C, D, E minor, D, G. You see? And I cycle through and I'm getting used to uh, transferring those chords. And, and I just have to be honest with you. To play a song, you have to be able to play those five chords in like a half second. And it will sound fantastic, especially if you're strumming along with it. So let's go ahead. Uh, I want you to work on that. I want you to work on this. Can we do that? Sure. Okay, great. Let's go to the next page. I put two, two, four, two songs on here, pages three and four, so you can kind of look at them. Page three and four. I have chords for you, uh, chord charts, so you can play the song Country Roads by John Denver, or you can play Amazing Grace by John Newton. Um, I, I have the chord, and you see that there's a number next to it. Yeah. The number tells you how many times to play the rhythm. Okay. So you can just use that exact rhythm that I showed you. And so let's, uh, let's take a look at it. Amazing Grace. Let me try this, right? <clears throat> what chord do we start with? G. Okay, it's the four finger chord, right? Our rhythm sounds like this. That was the rhythm, okay? And so it would sound like this. Minor. Is actually one of the chords that was not highlighted in black. So you might have to learn that. Unless you, if you want to be a little lazy, you can just kind of do the A minor. another song right on the next sheet too and you can try out real songs so I'm telling you it, I'm, I'm telling you this week you can start playing some songs it will be much slower if you don't know these chords yet right if you just learned these chords today much slower but I do expect either this week or next week that you'll actually start to play songs slow and big gaps between the chords but you know those gaps will go they'll shrink down to nothing pretty soon I don't think it gets any more straightforward than that. That's, that's what a beginner should work with. Okay? Okay, then um, let's see, we have 20 minutes left. Good, good. Um, can we do this? Can you guys uh, take about five minutes and go through page one? I'm gonna teach you finger picking in just a little bit, but I want you to practice some of these chords real quick, okay? So, if you haven't played the chords in black yet, then I want you to take about five minutes and I want you to work on them, okay? If you feel comfortable with those, then start to work on the other chords, okay? And then I have a few people that I want to tune your guitars. Can you play me and eat, can, uh, can you strum your strings real quick? I'm gonna go through. Oh, he's definitely tuning. Okay, cool. I'll meet you over here by the piano and I'll tune you. Can you strum your? Can you play um, like an E minor? E minor? Yeah. Cool. And can you play an E minor? Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. Can I hear it? Cool. I'll tune you. Okay. And can you try? I think I need to tune you as well. Okay. And I'll do it. I'll tune you a little bit. It sounds good. Okay. 
So you, uh, you four, so you three, just come over here real quick, and you two. I'm gonna tune you on the piano. Everybody else, work on your chords, okay? Try running through those chords. Remember, two exercises that you can do. Take your fingers, put it on the core, strum it once, put your hand behind your back, do it again, as fast as you can. Hand behind your back, okay? Now listen, over the next month, and okay, when you first learn to play your chord, it's gonna be a multi-step process, okay? When you play your G, it's gonna be like, okay, this finger first, <laughs> then this finger, then this finger, then this finger, right? Eventually though, what you wanna do is you wanna be able to train your fingers to kind of all go where they wanna go at one time. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, if you can do an A minor, one, two, three. You don't wanna think in terms of a three-step process after a while, right? You wanna get them to all kind of go where they need to be and then drop it, okay? That is weird, that process of teaching your hand to do that. It's just gonna take some time. Okay? 
Okay. You, you gotta try to get to that as quickly as possible though, because I think one of the bad habits I learned was doing the one, two, three, and then it was so hard to get out of the habit. Right. So as quick as you can, do the bang all three fingers at the same time. Or, yeah. You know what I did when I was learning is I actually, I would, I, I tried after a while, I said, I'm not going to put my fingers down until I get my fingers above the strings that I want, and then I drop them. So I tried that, I don't, um, it's been so long since, I was a teenager at the time, so it's been so long, <clears throat> but you might, you could try that as well. Okay, sound good? So we'll, we'll learn the bar chords coming up here pretty soon, um, but not today. Let's go to the last page, page five. And this is really awesome, okay? This is gonna be finger picking. <clears throat> so for those of you that haven't learned your chords yet, you may need to kind of like bounce between page one and page five. I wanna practice this with the E minor chord. So if you have to go back and look and see what the E minor chord looks like on page one, you can do that. Memorize it, and then we're gonna practice it with finger picking. Okay. Finger picking is this. It's basically playing some really pretty pattern. Sounds nice, right? Okay, we can do that with our fingers, or you could actually do it with your pick, and I call that pick picking. So watch, it would sound like this. Right? Sounds nice, right? And it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. So we're going to try this with the E minor. We use these two fingers, right? For the E minor. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more thing I want to show you. There's one little thing that can make the, the chord sound bad. And if the, your hand's touching that bottom string, it'll mute it. See that? So what I tell, if, if I ever teach a kid, like children, how to play, I say, make a hamster call it the hamster hole. I say make sure that you could fit a hamster through that little hole, right? So you put, put that little hole so that your hand's not smashed against the bottom, okay? So, get your fingers where they need to be. Make sure they're close to the frets, right? Make sure they're on their fingertips, right? Make sure you have a hamster hole. And make sure you're pressing down hard. All that stuff, right? Okay, we ready? Strum it, see how it sounds. Cool, sounds good. Okay, now drop your pick, and we're gonna do some finger picking. Ready? Here's how, here's, here's how it goes. These three fingers, you're gonna put, assign to the bottom three strings. Okay? Ring finger will be on your bottom string. Middle finger will be your second to bottom string. Pointer finger will be on your third to bottom string, okay? Your thumb is gonna go on the top string, okay? And I like to take these three fingers on the bottom, have the fatty part of your fingers facing straight up. See? Not like this on an angle, but straight up like that, okay? What we're gonna do, there's a pattern. We're gonna basically go like this. This, 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 this. Kind of alternate. Look, ready? This. This, 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 this. Understand? So, if you have the bottom three like this, right? And your thumb on the top, we're gonna do thumb, middle, pointer, ring. Thumb, middle, pointer, ring. Can you try that? slow at first. Thumb, middle, pointer, ring. And this, this pattern here will help you when you get home so you can remember it. Watch, ready? Do this. This bottom string, we're gonna look from left to right, and this bottom string is your fat, your fattest string, okay? And that top E is your skinniest string. 
that will even tell you the name of your strings, that which is something that you're going to want to learn eventually. Can I give you the name? Can I give you a little um, acronym to remember it? Sure. Well, uh, it's, it's Eddie Eight Dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. <laughs> Let's say that together. Ready? Right? Eddie Eight Dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. Eddie Eight Dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. So the fir your fat string, your, your your top string is E for Eddie. Eight Dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. Okay. So maybe that'll help. To, to remember it. Eddie Dynamite, goodbye Eddie. Okay, so this will tell you, we're gonna start with this string, the fat string, right? We go to this one, which is your B string, G string, E string, and you repeat that two times. That's all you're doing, okay? Can we try that? Everybody, everybody try it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk around and look real quick. See how much time we have? Good. Down one more, one more string. Oh, one more string. There you go. Cool. That's nice. Okay. Make sure that there's a hole there. Because I can see your strings are coming here. Just touch it. All right, let's check it out. Your fingers look great. Perfect. Fuck that top string a little longer. get that down and you repeat that over and over again. Now, if you feel like you have it down, I want you to try to speed up. No. Try it out. Okay? Now, can you, can you also play the... Eventually, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's just start with the top one first.
guys, you are absolutely right on track. You just remember the things that we talked about. Um, we are recording it, and they will have access to the recording too, right? Yes. If you want to re-listen to the recording too, uh, Renata is going to send you a video, a link to a video, okay? You can re-watch this and, and do some review. But listen, as you are doing the finger picking, okay, uh, remember there are some chords where you're not supposed to strum the first string. For example, the C major chord, you're supposed to skip the first string. What do you do with your thumb? Move it down. You just drop it down. Okay? Does that make sense? Go to your chord chart real quick and let's um, let's take a look at it. So with the D major, four chords down on the left. Where does your thumb go? On the third, the third string. The D. Third string down, the D string. That's right. That's where your thumb would go. These three fingers never move. They always stay on those bottom three. But the thumb can change, you know, to the different bass notes. Okay? And that's, we're out of time now, but listen, you got, you know, you got plenty of stuff to work on this week. And uh, I think it's going to sound great when you start working on the songs and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so how do you play long and practice every day between the sessions? Good question. Okay. Listen, uh, how long do you, did you practice each day? If you can do, if you could do, if you're very busy and you can put 20 minutes into it consistently, you're going to improve, okay? If you can put more in, fine. You're not competing with each other, you're competing with yourself, okay? So some people have to, they have longer hours they have to work, they're gonna have less time to practice. Who cares? You're not here to compete with other people. You commit when you're in this class to compete with yourself from the previous week. So you just make sure you're getting better each week and you're gonna become a, a pretty good musician over time, okay? Sound good? Really All right. It helps if you pick it up at least once a day. Yes.